Hi, and welcome to the Life After 50 show. I'm Katherine Watson, and I'm your host today. Today's show is sponsored by Find Houston Senior Care. Find Houston Senior Care is a local web directory for the greater Houston area, helping you to find anything you need elder care related, from assisted living to home care to hospice to wonderful organizations like the Arthritis Foundation that we're going to be talking with today. Today, I've got a special guest on. I have Jen Torres with the Arthritis Foundation. Jen serves as an executive director for the Arthritis Foundation. In this role, she leads the foundation's fundraising initiatives and helps to achieve the organization's mission of conquering arthritis. You know, a lot of people don't really uh, think about arthritis the same way that maybe they think about cancer or heart disease. And I think the Arthritis Foundation would like to change this perception. Uh, arthritis affects millions. In fact, uh, I was reading on their article on their website, I think it was like 52 million. Let me bring Jen up so she can talk to us and give us the facts about this disease and how we can uh, change uh, the face of arthritis in our country, how we can help people and how the Arthritis Foundation can help you and your loved ones. Jen, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So I, I have had a lot of experience. We were talking earlier with arthritis in my own family. And my guess is there's a lot of our, our listeners out there that have also experienced it in their family. Uh, there's so many different types of arthritis. And I think a lot of people don't realize the wide scope of arthritis. I was looking on the foundation's website yesterday and I was blown away. I thought I knew a lot about arthritis, but there's a lot of uh, a lot of different types of arthritis that we don't know about. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So yes, as you mentioned, there's so much information about arthritis. There's over a hundred different forms. So, you know, I think a lot of times the general public thinks, oh, it's just rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. And that's actually not the case. Um, we focus on all different types of arthritis, all hundred plus forms, which includes um, juvenile arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, gout, lupus, all of these other autoimmune disease that you hear about, that's actually part of what the Arthritis Foundation is focused on. And we are dedicated to conquering this painful disease. So lupus and fibromyalgia would be a type of arthritis? Yes, that is correct. I and did so not know that. Yes. And um, so when we are talking about the resources that we offer and the programs that we're doing, that is for people with all these types of arthritis. Well, my guess is our readers here, I guarantee you every one of them knows somebody with some form of this disease. Absolutely. We've got a few people showing up uh, at the show today. Here's uh, Jennifer. Uh, hello from the Arthritis Foundation in Oklahoma. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks Hi. for showing up. <laughs> and let's see, we have Ann when I think it's pronounced. Um, great to have you here on the show as well. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So we've got a few people showing up, looking forward to having some more. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them during the show. If for some reason we do not get to your question during the show, Jen or I will come in and we'll make sure you get the answers that you're looking for, okay? All right. Hi, so, Ann. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> Ann Wynn is a, a really great board member of ours here in Houston, longtime supporter of the Arthritis Foundation. Great, great. Well, we're happy to have you here. We're happy to have all of you here. And uh, uh, this is a, a subject, like I said, it's near and dear to my heart. And, you know, it doesn't get the, the, uh, attention, I think, that it deserves. Uh, when I saw what rheumatoid arthritis did to my mother-in-law, uh, the quality of her life, uh, it was it was just really heart-wrenching. 
And uh, I know some of these others, I know people with fibromyalgia, I know people with lupus. Um, I know, you know, a lot of these other types of arthritis are affecting so many different people. How many people in the US do you estimate are affected by some type of arthritis? Well, you had your stat right. So it's 52 million Americans with okay. doctor diagnosed arthritis. So that doesn't include, like you shared with me, people that <laughs> think that they have probably some do. Of, yeah. Some type of arthritis, they're feeling stiffness, they're feeling joint pain, and um, that haven't been diagnosed yet. And then that also includes that 52 million Americans, that includes 300,000 children just in the US living with juvenile arthritis. Um Kids as young as 12 months old are being diagnosed. We're seeing toddlers that may have been walking and then they stop walking. Or the parents report that their knee looks like a grapefruit. And these children are going to multiple doctors before they're getting the correct diagnosis. Um, and this is life changing, not just for the child, but for the entire family. Um, a lot of times this means medications, uh, either weekly or monthly injections, a ton of doctor appointments and lab draws. Um, I've heard of families that the mother or father has to quit their job or go to part time because they can't keep up with their workload and all the doctor's appointments. So, you know, we are really just trying to make sure for both adults and children that we're connecting them and we're creating the sense of community so they have others to rely on and they don't feel alone in this journey. Right, right. I think that is that is huge. And I see that with our seniors a lot too. Sometimes they do get isolated. Sometimes uh, people with arthritis will stay in their home. I know my mother-in-law started not going anywhere because it was physically hard. Just to go to the grocery store was physically hard for her. And uh, so she stopped going. She stopped having those social connections. And uh, if we've learned one thing, we've learned over and over again, I think it affects the mind, it affects the body. Uh, I know the Alzheimer's Association, we talked about social connections and how important they are. My mother-in-law also ended up with severe dementia. And, and I think the arthritis had a hand in that because it stopped the socialization, it stopped her from exercising because she was afraid it would hurt, um, you know, just so many different reasons. And I think it's important for people to, to realize how much of an impact this disease can have on people. Agreed. And I think you bring up a, a, a very important point that arthritis makes people stop doing the things that they love. And it's actually one of our taglines. If you see behind me, there's this like green flag that says yes, um, mm -hmm. because our tagline is the champion of yes. We want people with arthritis to do the things that they love, whether like it's someone in their 70s or 80s that just wants to go to the grocery store or go play bridge or see their friends at a, a at a luncheon. We want them to still be able to do that and not let arthritis hinder them. When we talk about young adults, we want to make sure that a, a woman that's diagnosed at 21 with rheumatoid arthritis, that she's still able to go off to college and not have to live with her parents, you know, even 18, I guess, um, if you're going off to college. But we want to make sure that we work towards this, where people don't have to stop doing what they want to do because of this disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a lot of people showing up on the on the call today. Obviously, this is hitting home with a lot of people. Um, uh, so I just want to kind of go through this. Uh, Nancy, uh, let's see what she says. The arthritis foundation is creating a live yes arthritis network. Tell me about that. So it's our Live Yes Arthritis Network. It it's, goes along this line of creating connections for people, whether it's across the country or down the street. Which you know, we're just talking about. Yes. 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 And a lot of times people 
I'll go back to someone that's 30, okay, and they're diagnosed with lupus. They may want to speak to someone that's their same age, kind of going through a similar situation, whether it's a working mom mm-hmm. or, you know, a guy in college or going to law school. They want to be connected with people that are in the similar life situations as they are. Mm-hmm. And so this Live Yes Network is part of that. Um, it, and we've kind of just launched it with the Arthritis Foundation. It's really exciting. So more to come on, on the network. Oh, that sounds really exciting. I think that that could make a really huge impact on a lot of people's lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Al is saying the video is frozen on his screen. Is anybody else experiencing that? Let me know in the comments. Um, Maybe just refresh Al and see if that helps. Sometimes it might be your computer. Uh, So it's not frozen on ours. Uh, So hopefully it's not on anybody else's. So uh, somebody was asking, uh, let's see, Jennifer was asking if you could share about events, some of the events that the Arthritis Foundation has. Of course. So part of our mission, of course, is to fund scientific research and programs and services. So to do that, we host fundraising events. And that's a lot of what I spend my time doing um, here at the Arthritis Foundation is creating events uh, that can connect people. But we also raise money uh, to invest in scientific research and our other uh, pillars of our mission. So coming up for us is a gala called Bone Bash, and that's in October. And it's a costumed event. It's been named one of the best galas in Houston. Um, everyone wears a costume. This year's theme is around the world. So people can wear a different costume from around the world. And it's one of our largest events. We have both people that are impacted by arthritis as well as community members and physicians. We have a lot of rheumatologists and orthopedic surgeons that come to this event because it is such a time for the community to come together. Other than that, we do a walk to cure arthritis, which is a 5K walk um, along with a one mile option. We wanna make sure that all of our events um, are friendly to people that might have mobility issues. And then in December, we do a jingle bell run. So that is a 5K run, but again, we have a one mile walking option. And all of these events are meant to raise awareness about who arthritis is impacting. Because just like you said, it's not just a certain age category. It's people of all ages. Um, Additionally, we do host programs. So we do host educational programs where we might bring in a rheumatologist or an orthopedic surgeon to talk about arthritis and to answer people's questions about the disease. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's important. That's needed, I think. Uh, And it is one of the chat. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. And and then other than that, you know, when we're not having a program or a fundraising event, we have the website, like you mentioned, it's got a wealth of information and you can go on there. It's super interactive. We're very proud of our website and you can look at all of the tools that we have. Um, I know we were going to talk about exercise at some point, but we have a really great app called Your Exercise Solution. Yes. And you can actually go on either to our website or download the app and you can pinpoint where you're having pain at, whether it's in your hip or your shoulder. And this program will give you specialized stretches and exercises for this joint pain. Um, So it's a very, very cool tool that people can use. All of the listeners, people that are um, tuning in, I strongly encourage you to visit arthritis.org. And I've put that uh, link up on the uh, page so oh, that everybody perfect. can Thank have you. that. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't I didn't notice that. I, I was looking at the website last night, but of course, it's it's quite extensive. There's a lot of information. So I didn't get to everything. Tell me again where somebody would find that link. So right when you go to arthritis.org, there's different tabs at the top of the website. And one of them is what is arthritis? So Mm -hmm. on that tab, you can look at all the different forms like we've been talking about and drill down to get really, really um, specific information. And then right next to that, I believe, is arthritis resources and how we can help you. And on that tab, you'll see the different resources that you can click on. 
Great, great. Well, I love that. Uh, I think exercise is a huge part in uh, managing pretty much any disease out there. I mean, you know, whether we're talking about arthritis or dementia or heart disease, exercise always seems to come up. And uh, but a lot of people with arthritis are afraid to exercise because they're afraid they're going to have more pain. Uh, you see that a lot. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. And we are always telling people, you know, keep moving. Don't stop. Um, even if it's a quarter of a mile that you walk, even if you walk it really slowly, it's not only going to help your body, but it's going to help you mentally as well. It's going to help you feel more motivated and say, hey, can I go further next time around? So we so encourage exercise and having this well-balanced treatment approach. Um, of course, we would never say to people that they should take a certain type of pharmaceutical drug. We really do believe it's a well-rounded approach, whether it's medications plus exercise plus a certain type of diet, even holistic approaches such as acupuncture or massage. Mm -hmm. The Arthritis Foundation, we embrace all of those different types of treatment options because we feel like everyone has their own journey. Mm -hmm. Everyone's situation is a little bit different and you have to sometimes try different things. Um, especially if you're told as a child, you know, you're 10 years old, you're going to have to take medication for the rest of your life. You probably do want to try some other options as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because we all know that with most medications, there are side effects. And uh, to be on them extensive periods of time, you're going to have more chance of developing those side effects. So I think looking at other things, I look at my mom, she was an inspiration. Uh, mom had severe osteoarthritis, but she never stopped. In fact, um, when she was 88, she was in a, an accident. Someone drove into a store that she was in, oh. hit her with the car. All of the cabinets fell on top of her and they rushed her off to the hospital, obviously. And she was in the emergency room and the doctor came in and he looked around. He said, where's your wheelchair? And she said, well, I don't have a wheelchair. And he said, well, you have to have a wheelchair. She said, I don't have a wheelchair. He said, well, how could you possibly walk with the amount of arthritis that you have in your spine? And she started laughing and, and he said, I don't believe you can walk. And he made her get up and walk. Oh, and she wow. was working out three days a week at the gym. And when I say she was working out, she was serious. I mean, she would get on the treadmill for 20 minutes and the, the uh, rowing machine for 20 minutes and the bicycle for 20 minutes. And, you know, she did weight. She did it all. And she was like, about 95 pounds, you know, at that time, just solid muscle. But uh, she told me one time, she said, you know, she said, when I wake up in the morning, she said, it's really, really hard to get out of bed. And my whole body hurts. And she said, I just get up and I keep moving. And I don't stop moving. And she said, I don't allow myself to sit for too long. Um, if I'm watching a TV program, she said, I'll stand up every commercial and walk in place, you know, anything to keep moving. And I mean, that's uh, so amazing it made to such hear a that. Difference. It made such a difference. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, refused to do any exercise. And she did end up in a wheelchair. And she did end up a lot more debilitated. Granted, she had a different type. But uh, still, I can't help but believe that the exercise made a huge, huge difference. I agree. My grandfather walked a mile and a half every day at the mall, inside mm -hmm. the mall at Pasadena Town Square Mall every single day. And it was something that he looked forward to. You know, he yeah. had friends that he would see there and that's just what he did. He got up out of bed, got dressed, had breakfast and then drove down to the mall. And it was just his routine. And I think it really helps keep him mentally and physically strong, His, mm -hmm. you know, till the end of his life. So, yes, yeah, I yeah. agree with you. Good. I want to shout out to a few of these people again. We have Ruth says, thank you so much for help bringing awareness to this important issue. Thank you, Ruth, for showing up today and uh, supporting the Arthritis Foundation. So uh, let's see. I, I 
would like to find out a little bit more. We're getting close to the end of the show. And I want to find out a little bit more about how we can help the Arthritis Foundation and bring more awareness to this disease. And just if you could tell us a little bit more yes. about that. Well, yeah. thank you for asking. Um, one thing that we are very big players in is advocacy. We want to make sure that bills and laws are being passed that have the patient in mind. Um, we want to make sure that people have quality care, access to quality care. So something that I feel like is very um, easy and tangible for people to do is to become an e-advocate with us. This allows people to write letters to the lawmakers. Why is it important that they pass bills that positively positively impact the patient. Um, so you can actually go to arthritis.org slash advocate and learn how what we're doing in the legislature and then how you can be an e-advocate. And it's very simple as writing a letter, maybe uh, usually it's sending an electronic email. Um, I know some people don't do email a lot, but you can also do the, the old school snail mail as well. Um, but really just letting our, your voice be heard and why arthritis laws and bills are so important. Another step is that people can volunteer at our events. Like I mentioned, we have um, programs as well as the fundraising events and we need volunteers to help us. And we only have four people on our staff here in Houston. So we rely on volunteers very, very much. They are the heart of this organization and they really help make sure our events run smoothly, that we have enough power, you know, uh, helping hands on event day. So that's another um, way that people can help. Of course, we are always fundraising, so donations are always greatly appreciated. This goes towards our scientific discovery, um, our advocacy efforts, as well as our programs and services. And of course, we do invest a lot of money in juvenile arthritis research as well. Great, great. Okay, so everybody go to the Arthritis Foundation um, website, uh, arthritis.org, and get involved, get involved, because chances are if it doesn't affect you today, it may affect you or somebody you love in the future. And my guess is you probably already know several people who are suffering with this. Um, Jennifer, I... I would like to talk to you a little bit more about uh, some of the different, oh, oh, excuse me. I'm looking at a question I had that I wanted. What are some of the uh, concerns? I know there's a shortage. I've heard there's a shortage of rheumatologists. Uh, yes. what, what, tell me about that and what can be done and what is the Arthritis Foundation doing to, to try and help with that situation? Because that's, that's a huge problem. I know in the town that my mother-in-law lived in, there was one rheumatologist for everybody. Um, I'm glad you bring that up. Yeah. I'm glad you bring that up. Yeah. So yes, there is a severe shortage of pediatric rheumatologists. So these are doctors that treat the children with juvenile arthritis. There's about 250, only 250 in the wow. US. There wow. are states like Louisiana that do not have a single pediatric rheumatologist. Um, wow. So these children and their families are driving you know, hundreds of miles sometimes to see a doctor. Wow. And we have a lot of families that we know that travel from Baton Rouge and Lake Charles to come here to Houston, um, where we're very fortunate to have 10 pediatric rheumatologists. We have um, uh, the, one of the most, uh, you know, largest bases here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, for adult rheumatology, yes, there is also a shortage, especially as people are being diagnosed more frequently mm -hmm. and faster. We there The need is great for rheumatologists. I hear people they call someone, um, a rheumatologist, and the wait to get in might be four or five months. So what the Arthritis Foundation is doing, very exciting. We are funding fellowships across the country to ensure that people that are in medical school go into the field of rheumatology. So just this year, we funded nine different fellowships. Wow. Um, we went ahead and funded fellowships that were already in place at certain universities. So we just added on another spot. Mm -hmm. 
And that was all funding that we did through our fundraising efforts. And um, so we're really proud of that to say we are doing something, making a concerted effort to ensure that we're getting some new rheumatologists in and really making sure that it's a field that's talked about when they're in medical mm -hmm. school. You know, I know some other fields like um, cardiology and OBGYN, like those are always really, really pushed in medical school. Well, we're trying to make rheumatology one of those as well. Mm -hmm. There's a huge need in it. There's definitely yeah. a huge need. And a rheumatologist isn't going to get called in the middle of the night to go deliver a baby. So there's Agreed. benefits. <laughs> Agreed. There's benefits. Agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing that is very nice that the Arthritis Foundation has is called the Resource Finder. Um, you can go on, again, arthritis.org. You can find it here. And you can type in your um, zip code. And it will bring up a list of rheumatologists in your area, as well as orthopedic surgeons if you're looking for for someone uh, you know that field as well um but it's really great because on there you can also pull up exercise programs in your area and local arthritis foundation events so you don't have to be in houston you don't have to be in texas you can be in new mexico or florida and type in your zip code and we'll pull up a list of, of people in your area Oh, that's great. That's yeah. a big, that's a big benefit. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of times I know when we uh, moved my mother-in-law here from Louisiana, it was trying to find a rheumatologist to bring her to, you know, and of course she was on Medicare. So then we had to find one that accepted Medicare too. And it's um, challenging. You know, it's challenging to find challenge. someone yeah. that, that yeah. works with your insurance and someone that you like too, right? Mm -hmm. Especially Absolutely. rheumatologist. It's someone you're going to mm -hmm. see for a long time. Right, right. And and we were very fortunate and we found a great one here. So that was good. So arthritis, um, I, one of the statistics I read on the site that really got to me, it said it's to blame for the loss of 172 million work days each year. I don't think employers really have thought about this and how much it affects them. It costs the U.S. economy over 300 billion, that's billion with a B people, annually in lost wages and medical expenses. So it's not just something that affects that person with the arthritis, it's affecting all of us. It's affecting your companies, it's affecting everybody. So this organization I think really needs and deserves our support. Uh, it sounds like y'all are doing a lot of really great things and there's some easy ways to get involved. Uh, like Jen was mentioning, you can easily just uh, become an e-advocate. That's something anybody can do. Uh, so get involved with the Arthritis Foundation. Jennifer, what, what else would you like us to know? Well, I think you did a great job of highlighting the the lost wages and the the money that our economy is is losing. I think something we would like for people listeners to know is that there are so many more people out there that are impacted by this disease that are not involved with the Arthritis Foundation at this point. We are the nation's largest nonprofit and that's dedicated to conquering this disease. So just mm -hmm. like you said, it's so important for people to get involved, whether it's even just educating yourself and talking to your friend or neighbor about this disease. Because like you and I were talking about before the show, um, people don't think that arthritis is life-threatening or can cause... Right death, but it can. And so mm -hmm. to talk about these issues, to be educated, and just to spread that awareness is so important. Because when we look at the amount of supporters that we have, we haven't even scratched the surface when you look at the stats of 52 million Americans impacted. Um, so just continuing the conversation and learning more about the disease, just like you said, I didn't know it included lupus or fibromyalgia. Oh. You know, it's that education piece. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, and like I said, I thought I knew a lot about arthritis, but uh, there's so many more types and so many more people affected. So, Jen, I really thank you for coming on the show today. We are having to wind it down. Um, if you have any questions for Jen and you didn't get them answered, maybe you're watching the replay of this or you're watching it on LinkedIn or YouTube, 
feel free to make a comment. I'll make sure that she gets those questions and, and we get you some answers. Um, if you need some answers or some help, reach out to the arthritis uh, organization, uh, arthritis.org. The uh, web uh, site is listed on the page right now. So go ahead and reach out to them. Uh, look around the website. I think you'll be amazed at all of the resources and the information that they have. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was great. And you did such a great job at saying all the stats. You made it very easy for me. Um, you were very well prepared for that. So thank you for having us and including the Arthritis Foundation on this wonderful show. Absolutely. So thank everybody to thanks to everybody for showing up today. I know some of you are going to be watching this as a replay. Know that we will be uh doing this show every Monday. It's called the Life After 50 show. If you haven't watched us before, every Monday we're live here on Facebook and we're bringing you more information to help you uh, find out what you need to know after age 50. So re reach out and visit Find Houston Senior Care for all your senior care and elder care needs and come back to see the Life After 50 show. Next week, we've got a great show. We've got um, uh, Annette Piper. Sorry, I couldn't think of her name for a minute. Annette Piper is a life coach, and we're going to be talking about managing life's transitions. So that will be a good show. The last show of this month will be Lacey Fox and Barry Crispin with A Sacred Choice. And we're going to be talking about planning funerals. And there's a lot more to it than you may think you, you may think you already know everything about that. But there's a lot more to it. And there's a lot of different things you can do with funerals these days. So we're going to be touching on that. I'm Katherine Watson. This is the Life After 50 show. And again, thank you for showing up. Uh, thanks again uh, to Jen Torres for coming on the program and taking time out of her busy day today. Visit the Arthritis Foundation and get the information you need and get involved. Have a great day, everybody.